imagine like meeting your husband and your kids asking you, Mom, <laughs> Dad, how'd you meet? <laughs> well, he hollered at me on <laughs> the love street. <laughs> I rolled my window down and took his Snapchat. <laughs> Sprinkles and spice and everything nice and not so nice about dating in the Middle East. Yes. Hot topic. The hottest topic. The hottest topic. Taboo topic. Yeah. If also. we haven't gotten disowned already, we might this week. We never thought we'd make it this far and we hope. We and we hope to further. keep on going further. <laughs> that was I your line. That. I stole your line. Listen, I think this is a general <laughs> feeling in the studio today. We're all like, can we can we make it further than can today? <laughs> I mean, I hope we can. But we, I, I, I honestly think this is a much needed topic to discuss. Like, we really need to talk about this. I mean, I think the issue is that no one talks about this topic, and obviously, people do date. Yeah, you know, we I have mean, a whole region I, dating. I, like we, like you remember when we were talking about it, we were like, there is this unspoken rule where. It happens, but we don't talk about it. In all realness, though, I am I am at an age now where I think back to my early 20s and how I had no idea because I lived outside, right? I had no idea how it happened, how yeah. the region dated because no one discussed it. It wasn't normalized. There wasn't a YouTuber or an Instagram person or a, a podcast that talked about it. So I thought today, if we don't talk about this, if you and I don't talk about I mean, will. it's usually something you talk about to your closest friends but even then a lot of people actually uh, don't talk about that with their friends yeah because it's so taboo so more conservative people tend to just not discuss it we're we're gonna get into it so without further ado let's get into it let's dive in all right i think the best way to start is um basically talk about a backstory the backstory and the cultural context of dating in the region yeah so I want to hear your take on it because like you haven't lived here. So what is your take on like the dating scene here? I mean, my take on the dating scene here is obviously mainly what my friends have told me. So in Kuwait, what I know is a lot of people go on dates in cars. So they Mm -hmm. meet somewhere. The girl leaves her car. Yeah. The girl (laughs) leaves her car to go on a date in the guy's car. Yeah. And I know my Omani friends have done this. I know some of my Saudi friends have done this. I think it might be like a Gulf centric thing because I don't think people in the Levantine, Levin, Levin, Levin countries, Levantine countries, whatever you call it, they, I don't <laughs> think they do that. <laughs> like you could tell your mom, like, Mom, I'm going on a date. No, I don't think it's, I don't think anywhere is that open yet. In the, in, the, in the Middle East, I don't think so. Lebanon. Uh, you think so? Maybe. I think. I don't, so. I don't think to that level. Maybe Christian families. Could talk not about even they're really? they're also at the end of the day they're Arab. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. I'm not, no one's telling their mom, "Hey, mom, I'm going on a date." I mean, maybe if it's serious, I feel like they would if it was serious. Well, okay. So what I've seen, right? Is if if you're asking my opinion on the dating yeah. scene, is that if two people are serious, they've dated for long enough to know that they want to tell their parents about one another because it's leading to marriage yeah so they'll say oh i'm seeing this person and then there's sort of like the families call each other there's sort of like um there's a formality behind it Mm -hmm. so yeah that's my take i i mean i don't know exactly how it goes but i would assume that like they the families would be more open or it's more normalized for people to date before getting married. And like you said, yeah, like the, they would involve the families like later, maybe not yeah. so much. They'll the date. Thing. And then once they're sure that they want to get engaged or that the families would accept an engagement, like, Oh mom, I'm talking to this person yeah. for marriage. I mean, tell us if we're wrong. We yeah, might be wrong. Honestly, we <laughs> might we we're not the authority on this. Yeah, but we're the authority on uh, Kuwait, I guess. Yeah, and I think we, so. a little Saudi. Like we have good in, info on Saudi. We have good intel. We have good. <laughs> honestly, 
I'm going to just say We have our Saudi girlfriends who are spilling the tea. Our Saudi girlfriends <laughs> left no area of Saudi Seriously. untouched. <laughs> they gave us all the tea. They gave us all like the, I mean, in Saudi, it's different to Kuwait because mainly mm-hmm. they're 30 million. Yeah. And we're what? 1.5. I don't, I think we're under 2 million Kuwaitis still. Yeah. So don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in Saudi, because there's so many more people, they can actually, I think, go out and like not be seen. Whereas in Kuwait, yeah, everyone knows everyone. It's so difficult to go out and not run into someone who knows you or knows of you or can recognize you. So dating is much more like hush hush hidden. Yeah. Whereas in Saudi, also I think from Khobar to, to Jeddah to Riyadh, you have such a different demographic of people in terms of like being conservative and being mixed. Because I think also being mixed plays a role. Yeah. But I think in general, so <sighs> dating obviously is not the most common and it's not the preferred means for families, of, for families, because like usually, I mean, <sighs> historically, <laughs> historically, let's say historically, um, you just have arranged marriages. Like yeah. there, there is no dating. What is dating? Dating. There's halal dating, which is <laughs> the engagement. We get engaged, and that's it. And then you can get to know each other. Or there are some people who actually get married. Yeah, yeah. like they just see uh someone like on paper like they're this 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 they check your family's boxes okay you're marrying that person and then but you're i think just gonna that's where when we talk about those people they're much more conservative but obviously like basically what we're trying to say is that traditional values obviously play a huge role and i don't think we're gonna get too much into traditional no, values i mean if everyone knows you Arab Google it. and you're listening to this podcast ask you your know. mom Ask if your you dad. Know, yeah. Ask your, ask your brother. <laughs> ask your cousins. You know. You know. If you know, know, you know. Yeah. Everyone knows. <laughs> also, I it's on Google. I I would know. I googled it. I was like, I wonder if this. <laughs> you if googled me. the date. Yeah, yeah. I was like, how do you have state? Because when I lived outside, I don't know. I just didn't want to ask my friends. I was yeah. like, they think I'm an idiot. So I decided to Google it. Like a yeah. I mean, <laughs> I will say it is more relaxed than like back in the day because we do see more. Uh, I want to say like co-ed groups of friends, like there's guys more and co-ed girls, schools, like yeah, um, but they're they're different demographics, obviously, um, but yeah, I, like the dating scene has definitely evolved. Mm. <laughs> I want to say it definitely has evolved, and um, it went from following each other in cars gosh. and like chatting when they're parked in front of the co-op to actually going on dates in cars. <laughs> I. <laughs> hated that when like guys would chase girls in their car that's so creepy they still do that that is so creepy they still I, honestly, on, on I golf know road. some girls <laughs> like that but that yeah i mean for me is is just stalkery like, yeah that is not okay it's creepy it's it's, really it's the creepy. worst when they follow you all the way back home it's like well what are you gonna come meet my family now yeah no are I, you proposing well i i don't know if it still is so common because i remember back in the day it was really common well back in the day it was every time you're in the car you're getting a if follow. you are a group of girls in a car you are getting followed we one time had a guy on a motorcycle follow us and was trying to open the door on a highway and i was like this man does not care for his life like he wants to die (laughs) was that on gulf road so he followed us from gulf road it's gulf road it's gulf Gulf road Road, and then we have uh shout out hope yeah second (laughs) second ring road i will avoid that road like the plague that road that ro- oh, I don't get how it's still going strong. What I think they've been doing this for twenty years. Thought of how many years we need have they been <laughs> guzzing each other on Gulf on Shah Al Hub? Since ninety three. Since ninety. Wow. twenty years. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's been years. No, but there are still girls who are like, let's go, or even guys. I know. Like yeah, because it's I mean? full. It's full on Friday night. That road. <laughs> all the population was there apparently. Imagine like meeting your husband. Your kids asking you, Mom, <laughs> Dad, how'd you meet? Well, he hollered at me on <laughs> the love street. <laughs> I rolled my window down and took his Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, we have to talk about Snapchat. And the snap? Oh, God. She's a snap, bitch. Where? 
No, but that's definitely something that <coughs> people don't understand. When people think Snapchat is a dead app, no, it's not. Not, not in, the in this region. <laughs> people here, they won't even say hi. They'll just say, do you have Snapchat? What's your snap? Or in cars, you know what they do? They show you their code so you can scan it. I don't get it. I don't. Like, you lower your window and you show me your code. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> You're supposed to scan it. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, the number of times where I've just thought, I wish I had something to grab the phone. I'll just take your phone. Oh I'll steal God. your phone. That would be so That'd cool. Be Imagine so if good. you stole his phone and drove I off. I would love that. <laughs> You're like, oh, so I thought you were giving it to yeah, me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I needed an upgrade. <laughs> this saves me the trip. Thank you. But do you want to um, talk a little more about like how it evolved? How do you think it evolved from uh, more? And I, I remember back in the day, like people did look down on... Um, we call them like love marriages like, yeah you know where people dated before they got married and it was always like I, I at least for me like I was brought up in a society where it was like oh if they're if they dated before they got married it's bound to fail or yeah. there's gonna be problems or you know what I mean but there was a scandalous aspect to it right there is yes that's exactly what it is I like that there is a scandalous aspect to it so I feel like there's a lot of doubt from people which makes no sense. Like, how do you think that people getting to know each other before marriage is a recipe for because <laughs> well, the idea disaster is disaster or failure. I think the idea is is rooted in religion, right? Me, I don't. I'm not, again. This is not a podcast where we talk about religion. Please do not quote us. <laughs> Please do not kill us. Um, but I think the idea is that it's more halal to get engaged. Yeah. In order to date, but the I issue mean, is the engagements here are engagements where you genuinely just date. So a lot of engagements get broken off. It's not like a big deal, like mm -hmm. in the West, where you're getting engaged and you're for sure getting married. It's definitely not like that. People will get like engaged more than once, twice, thrice. Like it doesn't really matter. It's dating. But the engagement period also here is supposed to be quite short. No one's going to get engaged for two years, for example. I was going to say, though, but you have families that are okay with that, like a year or two. I remember that was one of the things that I wanted to do but i didn't and where i was like i would want to be engaged for a, a year. year yeah before i i think a, a minimum of a year of an engagement is logical yeah but it's like dating for you because honestly like how are you getting married a year into being with someone i'm sorry like, i'm not bashing anyone i know some people it works great for them but you know that that's the thing but like the honeymoon period right i don't want to date someone for a long time like okay so i no, i'm not like trying to date you for five years but yeah i'm dating you for Honestly, I think a, a logical thing for me, and this is probably me coming from the outside, right? So yeah. I don't want to get, I don't want to date you for five years, but I would want to date you for at least a year and then we can get engaged, you know? Yeah. And then I would like an engagement every year. I mean, honestly, yeah, a year wouldn't be enough because like really you know were, you would be like planning your wedding and trying to get to know this person. Yeah. Cause like so the first, okay. The first six months of a relationship, honestly, don't, they don't even count. Your fully honeymoon yeah. phase, like exactly. You don't even argue. That's the thing. Like it's crazy for me, like to marry someone like th three, four months. Because that's the engagement periods here. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, that's what happened <laughs> with me. <laughs> and that it kids? was an arranged marriage. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like I know that there are people who still look down on yeah. like, dating and stuff like that. But for me, it's like if I'm dating with the intention to find my partner, my husband then how is that different because uh, like let's let's be real like the pool <laughs> is not that great the pool has a lot of murky water in it yes and and it's shallow like if my family are not bringing me viable options or or guys that i'm interested in that's it i'm done <laughs> <laughs> like you know what Cost. i mean Cost. That's it. no but i think i sit at home and do nothing and <laughs> just accept my fate you know i don't think most modern arabs that are and i mean and i mean like modern you know will appreciate the prospects of their mom and dads anymore yeah because what i think worked 10 years ago and i really mean it's recent 10 years ago it's not gonna work today social media presence 
all oh, of that yeah. like that's changed things and some guys are like no i don't want a girl that has social media or i don't want a public account or i don't want a girl that has uh guy friends and all that and you cannot know any of that through the parents you can't no girl's gonna tell her mom yeah mom i have so many guy friends i'm always out i'm always i'm always that lifestyle has become such a huge part of dating or mm -hmm. getting married that as far as i'm concerned i think modern arabs need to meet organically in order to be able to date yeah. because the most important factors for us are lifestyle you know but here's the thing i agree with you but i i think also lifestyle was always a thing like even back in the day like but back in the ago, day we didn't have the same lifestyle social uh, media yes, changed a but lot a guy would be like okay i want her lifestyle to be like this 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 and a woman be the same but the thing is is that I mean, I can speak for Kuwait. I don't know about other countries, but we really don't have spaces where it allows people, single people, to mingle and meet and get to know each other in a respectful way. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? We also don't really have, we haven't in Kuwait at least normalized a guy coming up to a girl. It doesn't happen. Yeah. And if he does, it's to say, give me your Snapchat, which as a 30 year old man, why do you even have Snapchat? <laughs> Not to <laughs> <laughs> your age shaming. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. If you're 30, you should no, no, honestly, Snapchat. any Mia man <laughs> over the age of 22, like, what do you, what do you have Snapchat for? Every, I don't get it. But we all know why. That's why. But when girls have Snapchat, it's because we show each other pimples and like, <laughs> I don't know, like, like this insane hair mask. Pimple pictures <laughs> to your friends? Because I've never <laughs> gotten one from you. <laughs> no, but I think what I do is I'll just put a face mask on and I send funny pictures to my friends, you know, or like me doing yeah. dumb things. That's the thing. I, I thought Men Snapchat are not died until like... I saw Kuwaitis, like, they are heavy on Snapchat. I know. <laughs> they don't ask for your number. They ask for your Snapchat. Yeah. Ew. Uh. If a guy asks <laughs> you for your Snapchat, red flag. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. If a man asks you for his for your Snapchat, he's not a man. But, you know, let's be real. Like, we asked. <laughs> Wait, what did you just say? You just said <laughs> I said, if a man asks you for a Snapchat, he's not a man. He's not. He's a boy. Mia wants problems. <laughs> Honestly, we might have to cut that out. That's like all. That's, <laughs> that's all the Middle East. That's, yeah, it's unusable. Uh, I don't have Snapchat. Uh, okay, well, uh, then, then it's evidence. Fine. Evidence. It's, evidence. Fine. it's evidence. Fine. No, you want the truth. You want the truth. Anytime someone has said to me, do you have Snapchat? I look at them, I'm like, yeah, you would have Snapchat. You look but, like But that's type. the thing that I was telling you yesterday is that I think also some men, I'm not going to say all men, like I'm sure they ask you for your Snapchat because maybe some girls are afraid their parents would find out or th they're not comfortable giving you their number. Then so ask, how can I contact you? Exactly. That's what I was just going to say. Like, how, like, can how can I How can I talk like, to you? Oh, I prefer Snapchat. Okay. But if you're approaching and you're like, What's your Snapchat? Are you on Snapchat? There's a connotation to it. The F <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a connotation, right? Yeah. We're not going to act stupid. Snapchat is, I think, maybe was created for innocent reasons. But <clears throat> in 2023, we all know what the in like the intention is if a guy asks a girl for Snapchat. So you don't want receipts. Yeah. You don't want receipts. And if you don't want receipts, what is what are we what are we doing yeah. here? Like, like if I'm dating someone seriously i would want our conversation to be saved because later i want to look you want to pull up receipts <laughs> yes. also i want to pull up receipts zainab <laughs> when is listen what zainab's not queen. saying she zainab will pull up things from 2019 be like look in 2019 this person said that it's been four years how do you even remember this you gotta keep the receipts babe. there you go She's, she has conversations from before i was born <laughs> That could be true, actually. Wait. <laughs> no, wait. There are no, no. There are no. Well, actually, there were phones. Email? Yeah, email, email, email. There were phones in the 90s, 95. Uh, yeah, but you remember the yeah, phones? Yeah, the brick phones. The one was texting. <laughs> the cord. Phones with cords. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, do you remember the. I like, know why I'm acting one. brand new. The, the, like, the huge brick one Horrible. that they would carry around. A weapon. It was literally like. <laughs> it was a weapon. You, If you hit someone with a brick phone, they would have died. This is not part of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, <it's> <laughs> Anyways, 
Um, what, were, what was the last thing we were talking about? Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> so, like, ask a girl uh, the means that she's most comfortable. Yeah, honestly, if you, because yeah, I do think to your point, you have made a really good point. Yeah, the girl could be uncomfortable. Maybe her parents are really controlling. All the good stuff. Just ask, hey, how can I contact you again? Or can I even contact you again? Mm -hmm. But I think going in straight with what's your Snapchat, it's out. Yeah. I I also want to say one thing. Like, I want to get one thing clear. Like, to anybody who looks down on dating or people talking about dating or people being open about dating, but she was sleepy. You know what I mean? (laughs) What is wrong with that? Okay, <laughs> if I'm trying to be wifed up, why are you judging me if I'm not going the traditional route? You know what I mean? It didn't work. She's a divorcee. <laughs> Let her be. It didn't work the first time. I did it the right way. I did the traditional <laughs> way. You know what I mean? If your mom hears this, I don't know no, what we're like. I do. love you, mom. I love my family. <laughs> I love everyone. Like, <laughs> I love my whole family. <laughs> Shout out, family. <laughs> kind of like low key a plea. <laughs> I'm like pleading every episode. I'm like pleading. We dig. Like, I love you guys. Please don't disown me. <laughs> then every episode we dig deeper and deeper. This whole of the podcast that we're doing, and every episode we beg our families not to listen. No, but honestly, from a re- religious point of view, please no, please <laughs> no, no. I'm not. I'm not gonna go. <laughs> please. <laughs> no, but let's be real. Like people are doing it. People date. And, and that's the thing, like, they're not really always dating with good intentions. So why are you judging people who are actually going out there to date with good intentions? Good intentions. What are the bad intentions? <laughs> we all know what the bad intentions are. <laughs> 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 I'm going to kill you. I'm trying to make a point, and she's like, don't say it, don't say it, no, we're going to get canceled. <laughs> Basically, I feel like some people or i feel like girls specifically date with the attention of getting married and men are split i think there are men who date with the intention i mean a small percentage date with the intention to get married but i think a big percentage date for just to pass time yeah or maybe to experience things I don't know because isn't isn't there a joke like he'll date you but he'll end up marrying his cousin? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. And we've seen those cases where like guys would actually like a girl. Yeah. And they would end up dating her, but they know their mom will not let them. And they don't her. have the courage to stand up to their mom. Yeah. And but it's like f- from the start, why would you do it? I mean, oh my god, there are so many stories. I've yeah, seen yeah, yeah. So many stories. Wait, where there are stories of girls having dated those guys for ten years. Oh my God, there, where you've and dated then, a guy and then she gets a message of his engagement. Yeah, that's to someone so else. Common. You know how common know. that is. And that's so heartbreaking. Breaking. And I think those guys, if, if you think that you are in God's good graces because you're doing what your mom's doing, Allah <laughs> has breaking that girl's heart. I said what I said. They're not listening to this podcast. They're not listening to this podcast. But if you know go- a guy who did that to you, you better send, send this it to segment. him and tell him karma will get you good. Inshallah, hope to my dad. This is so personal. <laughs> it hasn't happened to me, but I've seen a lot of my girlfriends go through it. And it's heartbreaking because these guys have no balls to stand up to their moms or tell the girl, look, my mom is not going to let me marry you. And then why would you, like, how are you even okay with, like, uh, getting engaged to someone else and that girl finding out through text? Like three, three weeks later, he's already married. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. But, so yeah, like, back to intentions. Like, I really do feel like it depends on the intention and unfortunately because there is a lot of segregation there is a lot of separation between men and women and from a very young age they are told that the other gender is just purely like you know for i mean it's procreation <laughs> yeah okay we can put it that way. no but yeah to your point there's a lot of people who's don't interact with women. Their only interactions are their moms, their sisters, and even their cousins, not that much, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because like their, their cousin could be a marriage prospect. Uh, exactly. So I grew up, like, really close with my cousins, like, my male and female cousins. And to this day, like, we all, like, 
hang out together. And it wasn't so common back in the day because like, I f- so I feel like that's one of the reason why a lot of things are so like hyper sexualized and w- men view women as objects as women as it's yeah. it not as a fellow human it's like no i am man you are a woman we yeah. in kuwait at least it's still very much like that so we see it in the fact that there are not really like male female friendships you go out you never see men and women interacting like just as like a group outside unless it's a study group i think i mean i have seen it but it's there i barely we see are it like him. the minority at like work <coughs> lunch breaks men together women together when i went to bahrain actually me and my mom clocked that the men and the women would go out to lunch as a group together and we said oh my god that's crazy that would never happen in kuwait Bahrain, i i, I think they're more chill but I and it was a lot of kuwait, Mahaja babes. Depends. Mahaja honestly babes with men. like i i don't want to generalize because i i know in kuwait it really depends like i know it it's a minority but i've definitely seen a there's lot of always groups of guys and girls hanging out especially younger yeah like but there's always exceptions to the rule Gen Z's. but i'm gonna give it 80 percent segregation Obviously, yeah, that's why I said it's a minority. Yeah. But l- we can't just say, like, th- we don't see it. It's not normal. I mean, I can go days without seeing it. I mean, it depends where. I think you, going. because you work in a more artistic environment. Yeah. You, you definitely see it more than I do. I, I work I, in a yeah, more corporate I, environment. So I, I think um, even when I worked a, a, cor- a corporate job, I did see more of like mixed like guys and girls hanging out together but like i said it just depends on what environment but i mean even with that like i don't think they know how to be friends like really be friends like it's very rare that you meet guys and girls who know how to be actual friends well it's surface level here it's very surface level yeah. and then one of them gets married and they block the other person yeah the husband that's or the, wife the told most it. common <laughs> thing it's so it's common. if you are married and if you're a guy that got married all of a sudden you have no female friends they're all uh, blocked yeah. removed deleted and if you're the girl you remove some of your girlfriends that have seen you and your past and it's insane you, yeah. you don't have guy friends you don't have girlfriends you have no friends yeah you know no one but your husband <laughs> insane <laughs> You can clearly, I think, you can like tell how I feel about it. So and, No, but guys do it too. Like, it's not just girls. I guys don't think guys remove their friends all that much, as much they as do. girls. Really? They will get married, and then all of a sudden, they have no girlfriends. No, but no guy friends? They don't remove the oh, guys. Oh, no, no, not guy no, friends. No, it's girls that remove the other yeah. girls. If the I mean, girls have seen the past. Yeah. Even with guys, I feel like... It, it guys, ha- they don't rat on each other. It's different. There's, a, there's an unspoken bro rule with men no where they will i disagree i I'm think that's that. their pr i think they like to brand <laughs> themselves no, no no i really think guys love branding themselves as like we don't rat men rat on really? each other yeah especially if they're competing for something especially if they're competing for a girl the same girl even Tariq admitted that they're... No, but that's pre-marriage. Post-marriage, I don't post-marriage? think men... I don't think so. Because if they, the girl, the woman Tariq? doesn't see the men. They're in Diwaniya. He doesn't rat on his boy. <laughs> Who's he going to rat on? What, the friends going to go see the wife and say something? No, they're not. I mean... They're not doing it, that. Kuwait, let's be real. If you're part of the 80%... You are not introducing your wife to your guy friends. No, of course not. Do, do, the, the husband does not even show a picture, which obviously, why would he? But it's he the wedding is segregated. <laughs> huh? <laughs> they call them, they don't say, they don't say like my wife or their wife's they name. They, what do they say? Al bait? Raja al bait. Or no, more Raja al bait. Oh, al bait is calling like this. <gasps> bait means house. So they don't like refer, they don't say my wife. A bait. That's so extra. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they don't really say, like, my wife uh, to their guy friends. They wouldn't talk about their wife anyway. God knows the girls can't stop talking about their husbands, though. My, daily, my husband. Okay. Girls will start every phrase with my husband. I love you guys, but we, we know you're married. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> I mean, if you're newly married I and you're it. excited, okay. But if you've been married for like a year or Beyonce. two, Beyonce, and all you're talking about, my husband, I want to see my husband. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I will say, some people really make it a personality to be married, 
And oh. you know what I really hate? Okay, I know it's, the, it's not the marriage episode, but I just have to say, girls who start dating and disappear from their friends and girls who get married and also disappear on their friends, same, to me, you're, you're on the same wavelength. That's your whole personality now. I'm dating this person or I'm married to this person. Because, I, I, look, I know it sucks. We've all been on the other end or the receiving end. We've all and been on the so receiving hurtful, end. it's so hurtful. But I feel bad because I feel like girls who do that are insecure and i think they spend their entire lives dreaming and waiting and doing everything in their power wishing hoping wishing hoping <laughs> everything in their Praying. power to get married or date a guy and so when they get it they're over the moon they don't realize they're so out of touch with reality you reel know? it in girl reel it in we've been here before him we will be here after him <laughs> exactly and that's the thing it's like yes okay you know it's exciting yeah it's so fun it's no so one's fun. no one's and saying I'm it's not I'm, I'm happy for you and nobody's gonna be more happy for you than your girlfriends and if they're jealous of you then they're not your girlfriends. true um but your girlfriends are gonna be so happy they're gonna let you go and and, and do your thing but don't don't forget about your girlfriends yeah you know, it's not yeah. cute it's it's a really bad look it just makes <laughs> you look like a pick me <laughs> no one's gonna come to your s support and like your your side to come to your side yeah. yeah when things you fight with your man and then you have no friends yeah like it's not a to good hate on him yeah who's gonna <laughs> who's gonna insult him for you because we know you won't yeah um but back to the topic which is dating of dating not fighting not fighting or marriage or, or hating, <laughs> or hating. <on> <laughs> I don't want to generalize all the Middle East because I know Lebanon, Egypt, like more Levantine countries, they're more relaxed when it comes to guys and girls being friends. I know in Saudi also they're more relaxed about guys and girls being friends. In Oman, I don't know. I'm not sure. I have all many friends. Mm -hmm. Some of them have male friends and some of the girls are really traditional and they don't. So I think they must be like Kuwait where it's a bit split. But I do think there's a toxicity and there's a real danger with having this level of segregation where women and men don't communicate because they don't really understand how the other 100%. half yeah. lives or sees things or just like we always talk about men in kuwait instead of going up to a girl and saying give me your snap no speak to her because they have a normalized speaking to a woman they don't know how so yeah. there's a real there's a real danger to it i don't think we talk about it enough you know girls are wowed by men and men are like so thirsty for girls <laughs> no, no, but not uh, no, fine, not us. But yeah. you can't tell me that there isn't a huge population of girls here that isn't like, oh my god, boys, oh my god, you know, it's like, no, yeah, oh my god, yes, definitely, and and you know, like they're at a stoplight, they're trying to like get the attention of the guy beeping yeah. at him, dancing, and, like, and I, uh, that's the thing that I, I, it's crazy, it, it drives me crazy, is that we, it's taboo to talk about dating, yeah, but this is normalized, it's taboo for men and women to be friends but this is normalized it's normalized for women to be thirsty for men and men uh, to to be the same but don't know how to talk to each other it's and then when they approach talking. they approach each other it's just so cringy it's really disrespectful it it crosses so many boundaries there's no appropriate approach you know what i mean no i mean it's borderline stalking in a lot of cases sometimes it's just full on is stalking and it's leaving notes in your car it's like following you to your car following you all the way home like do you know all, all of that is terrifying it's terrifying I, parking lots i've I've, you, I've had something happen to me i don't know if i've told you i was going to the bank to finish a transaction and i guess like in my car i was blasting my you music told i told you the story mom, yeah yeah so i go to the bank i park i notice this guy is like tailgating me like uh, from the highway and then i i park and he uh i get i i leave my car i walk to to the bank and he tries to cut me off with his car and so i walk around his car and I just go inside the bank and I, w I spent like 45 minutes in there doing like my transaction or maybe even an hour. I walk out. He's parked next to my car. That immediately is creepy. He's parked next to my car. Did you have a job? <sighs> like that already for me. It's not attractive because it just shows me that you have so much time to waste. <laughs> I don't want that. 
for a person that I'm dating because obviously you have nothing important going on for you <laughs> yeah. that you can sit out here and wait for, for me hour. after you saw me in my car. And literally he held my car door open, would not let me close my car door until I gave him my number. And I was like, I am not interested. I'm literally telling you I'm not interested. And he wouldn't let me go. And shame on everyone in that parking lot standing there watching and not interfering and being like halas. And he wouldn't let me close my car door. Because it's normalized. We've normalized yeah. this kind of like, oh, yeah, he's, he's, it's normal. He's flirting. And you know what he told me? What? He was like, oh, I saw you like, you know, jamming in your car to music and you look like you're, ha- you're having such a good time and you're a good vibe and I, I just want to talk to you. Well, you're a bad vibe, sir. <laughs> you're the worst vibe. So uh, it, it's just creepy. It's really creepy, you know? Like to me, it's like, Oh, so every girl that you see that's jamming in her car, you're going to follow her and you're going to do the same thing. So A, I don't trust you. B, you're creepy. C, you obviously have nothing good to do with your time. And D, you're obviously not respecting me telling you no. Well, I think at this point, it's like borderline, you're not stable. You can't be. If someone is saying no and you're forcing it and you were waiting for an hour and you clearly don't have anything going on, at some point, it's like something must not be right with you. You know, I, mean, I don't want to throw on around these statements and say you're not okay, but but at what point do you miss the social cues? But that's the thing. I think I I don't know if, if this is like also rooted in misogyny, where men think that if a woman is acting, a woman is acting a certain way, then it's she's okay asking for, for you. It. She's asking for it. It's okay for you to approach her. It's okay. Oh, like. And I know a lot of men think that when women say no, they're playing hard to get. Okay, we no, need no, to. There's no, a difference no. between playing hard to get and saying no. No is no. No is a full sentence. That's uh, Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen's dad. Really? When uh, they're like, yeah, their dad would always tell them that no is a full sentence. So good. No, but I think the issue is that society society here is is different to the west in the sense that we have this idea that modesty and shyness and saying no and not being interested are somehow all one you know yeah if she is saying no then she's modest no she, if she's saying no she's just not interested but somehow do you not think all of these have been blended into one of like the girl that gets followed and is not really giving attention to the guy, the guys think, oh, it's because she's shy or she's modest. Yeah. No, she's not interested. Yeah. There's a real difference. I but mean, they don't differentiate here. Yeah, they don't. That And that's what we were talking about earlier is that like men, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say just here. I think this is a global thing, but I think specifically in our region because they have minimal interaction with women yeah. they really don't understand social cues or like no they don't or cues they really don't and thought earlier before the episode he said something interesting the the percentage he was like saying 10 percent of men um will come up to you regardless of what you do then 10 percent will never come up to you and 80 percent are just waiting for the right time until they die and rot and honestly never have the right time. okay <laughs> i think we should address that um I don't, so I've asked my friends, apparently it's not actually normal in many places, but in Kuwait, our main issue is men will stare into your soul. They they look at you so much. They will connect with the pimple (laughs) on your face. They'll connect with your eyelash. They are so deep into staring at you and saying nothing and they're staring and there's no facial expression yeah. so usually you know i try to like make a face because i can see you staring i think they don't know that we have eyes or the ability to see them <laughs> staring. i think they don't know we can see them yeah you know so i'll make a face like either i'm like you know like like what, what are you looking what at? are you doing what are you doing or i'm smiling because it's so awkward that i'm like let me just smile and they still keep looking. No, they don't come up to you, or they don't, and they don't stop looking. So it's like, are you interested, or are you not? Because you're not coming up to me. You're just staring deep into my soul. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's so bad that we have to actually tell people that staring is rude. Yeah, staring is rude. You can't, sir. So if you like what you see, <laughs> say you something. either say something. Step up or step out. <laughs> or keep it moving. 
<laughs> Keep it moving, sir. Have a good day. No, but I think that to me, if anyone, if there's any man that does this, I just doubt that I'm doing this or listening to this, but if there's any man listening, period, and you know someone that does this or you do this. What's your favorite lip gloss? What is your favorite <laughs> lip gloss? <laughs> It breaks my heart sometimes. I think maybe I, I do sometimes sympathize. I don't. With men because uh, do you I'm stare like, at people until they're uncomfortable? No, I'm not saying it's okay for them to stare, but I really think that when it comes to dealing with women, they're clueless. They really are clueless. Like Tariq said, like yeah, because most they of don't them have are, are friends. terrified. They're terrified of us. Yeah. You know, and they don't have female friends, so they don't know what is normal, what is not normal. So even if they become friends with you, like I've had so many cases where like, I became friends with people or like, you know, we, we, we were in a setting. This guy was part of this group we were hanging out with. So we, you know, we'd have conversations. So I guess we were friendly. And then he started following me on Instagram. And he thought that it was okay that just because we are now friends, it was okay for him to send me inappropriate shit. What? What do you mean? What was he sending you? Like, can you get specific, please? I remember it was something about Kim Kardashian. That's all I remember. But it was quite inappropriate. And like I, you were his bro? <coughs> what do you mean I was his bro? You know how men just said each other lewd things? Yeah. Oh, my God. It was very like, oh, like, I, I'm not your bro. That's crazy. This is not okay. This crosses a boundary. This is very inappropriate. I'm not laughing. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. I'm so shook. At what point? <coughs> at what point? At what point does he think you're going to oh, appreciate you know, we're that? Cool, we're chill. We're friends. And they think that that's like, you know, how, how friends are. No. Exactly. No, but that that's, point, that's, there are boundaries. You will still respect me. Uh, yeah, like I, I, I just felt like guys think that just because you're friendly or that when you become friends with them, then there are no boundaries. And, and I think it, it's confusing to them here because... Like we said, like they don't know how to act. Men don't have female friends. And so they don't understand that girls' interactions with girls are different to guys' interactions with guys. <coughs> they yeah. just, they, they'll they treat you probably like they would a bro. And I absolutely don't want to be treated like a bro. I'm not your bro. I don't think they're treating you like you're their bro. No, because I men do send each other things that women don't necessarily do. Yeah, know? but to, to them, I think... Um, they, they just don't know how to act, period, when when there's a girl or, like, a woman involved. You know what I mean? I mean, it's either you're a bro or you're a woman. It's yeah. not, this is my friend, this is a human being, you know. It's, it's not nuanced. And I think the issue is that they also might not realize that every relationship is nuanced. The way I talk to my partner will be different to the way that I talk to my male friend, to my coworker, to, mm -hmm. you know we may all have the same sex and everything but we were not going to interact the same way if i just meet someone and they're a new friend of mine and they send me something inappropriate and we're very new friends what then what are you gonna send me when we are friends you know i, I think yeah. i'd have to talk to them right away because i'm like wait where do you think this is going what do you mean by this because also you don't just send someone inappropriate things i mean yeah. what's the intention are you gonna laugh at it uh, exactly. or something like, else and then if i laugh at it it's gonna be like Oh, oh, she likes yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she likes these kind of jokes. Yeah. Oh, you know what it's, I mean? It can only get <laughs> worse from here. I think it's a very down downhill slope. Yeah. Do Downward do slope. <laughs> Bia was mind blown today because we were talking about whether men or women can be friends. And we had an opinion that said that men will always be waiting for that opportunity. Like yeah. they can be friends with a girl, but the minute they get the opportunity, they're they're taking it. I disagree. <laughs> and I, I'll stand I know you said it's a universal thing that men and women aren't fully, fully friends, but I disagree. I am very happy with the friendships that I have with my male friends and I know that that's not something <coughs> I think about. But that's my opinion. Yeah, I mean honestly, like when it comes to friendship, like gender shouldn't be uh, shouldn't play a huge aspect but it does yeah and it depends on what kind of person you are but i i would say specifically to our culture and the region because 
we've shifted so drastically in such a short amount of time. Thanks like, to social media. Thanks to social media. Thanks to the internet. Mm-hmm. Thanks to dating apps. Thanks to all of these things. Like it has shifted so drastically like it's insane how it was and how it is now and how some things are normalized with certain families but they're not with other families like i know that definitely like dating is a little more normalized because also i think we've seen how the traditional way is not always the best way no i mean the divorce (laughs) rate in kuwait specifically is now over 50 percent and i think we might be the highest in the MENA region yeah so I think that's, uh, I would love to see a statistic on like how many of those are arranged and not arranged. I mean, there's on Indian matchmaking, you know, the the matchmaker did say that a lot of the arranged marriages, they end up working out. But she's talking about the old generation because we can't calculate the, yeah probability of it working out now look i'm not saying that arranged marriages don't work but you have to be honest and whether you're dating whether you're getting into an arranged marriage like the best thing is to be honest about what you want like don't go into a relationship like whether you're dating or you're trying to marry someone thinking that you know okay they i like the way they look uh their family is compatible with mine status is compatible with mine um you know religion religion blah 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 everything on paper is good and there are core personality traits that you don't like but you're like oh it's fine she'll change or he'll change no no yeah i mean that's the thing is you don't you don't base a relationship based on the fact that someone might change. You have to see them for who they are now. And similarly, I think there's such a desperation and a push for people to get married here. And I think, yeah. I don't know if it's all the regime. In Kuwait, there's this like, ah, it's just a push for marriage. Yeah. As if marriage is going to solve all your problems. Whereas I think it doubles them because your problems are now added on to their problems, you yeah. know? So this whole pressure to marry and you barely date and you barely know one another and you're still in the honeymoon phase and you still haven't even seen them get mad. You don't know who you're dating. You're getting into the most serious commitment of your life other than having kids. Yeah. And you don't even know who the person is. Yeah. You don't know what their habits are. I mean, we have so many scandalous stories and I'm, I really don't want to get into them today. No, not today. Story for another day. Honestly. Yeah. Of, of just <coughs> disastrous situations where yeah. people have hidden... They, they've, they've hidden kids, they hid previous marriage, they hid preferences, they, they hit so much, and these are core things that you might not know in three months, but yeah. you would in a year, or you would in six months. Yeah. Maybe you would even in four months. But I think there's such a rush, and there's this idea that marriage is, I don't want to say linear, but almost like, yeah, marriage is like the same thing for everyone. It's not. It's not. Especially for generations like ours who've seen like what works and what doesn't with our parents. I think we are very aware of who we are, more so than our parents, Mm -hmm. because we've also had the opportunity to do more. We all, for the most part, went to college. We all worked. A lot of our families had to get married during uni or during more formative years or before they even had a chance to work. So we know who we are more than maybe our parents did. Mm -hmm. So when we're ready to commit to someone, we have to really see the full image because I think the older you are, the harder it is to get married as well because you've developed these habits yeah, and, and these lifestyle quirks that you are going to have to adapt to with someone else. And they're going to have to like teach you how to adapt to theirs and you're going to have to like share spaces. And honestly, marriage, I don't think is black and white for anyone yeah. anymore, at least not of our generation. Yeah. We don't just stay in marriages because it's scandalous to get divorced. On the contrary, the reason the divorce rate is so high in Kuwait is because it's not scandalous to get remarried. It's not scandalous to get divorced. And thank God, because a lot of the marriages that are still in place today are not happy marriages. And thank God we had the opportunity to see our parents be happily married, right? But I know a lot of my girlfriends here in particular in in the MENA region, (coughs) have grown up seeing their parents not really spend time together. And maybe the reason they never got divorced is because the dad is in the diwaniya or at work or with his friends. And the mom is having tea with her girlfriends or she's shopping. And the only real interactions they had from these arranged marriages are procreation and dinner and Saturdays with the family, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think 
with us, our generation at least for the most part, we don't want the segregation of husband and wife. We want family. We want togetherness. We want that. No, yeah. you know, like we travel together. We don't just take trips on our own. And yeah, but I mean, you're well, blending people. Yeah, but that that like going back to the topic of dating, not marriage and divorce. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that's why like it's it is important to date because like you want to meet people who frequent the pla- same places that you go to, listen to the same music that you do, enjoy the things that you enjoy doing. So when it's a marriage setting or or not a marriage setting like when it's a serious or a serious thing like you well like there are pros and cons i think i think like when it's it's an arranged thing the pro is that you go into the deep stuff that matters initially you get that out of the way like the core beliefs the values all of that but then there's also the interests the personalities the compatibility all of that stuff and that you cannot know about someone by just sitting with them at a, at a chaperoned meet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, or like talking to them over the phone. Like these are things that you have to experience, really experience and know the person. Okay, so I do want to touch on online dating real quick because it is quite a taboo topic. Like it exists. Yeah, people are on the apps. People are on the apps. They don't talk about it, though. They don't talk about it. Also, um, everyone's catfishing. Yeah. <laughs> the girls are not putting their faces. Yeah. They're either putting a picture of their eye or, their lips. or a coffee. <laughs> no, no. Or, 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 lips lips like a, or a lips. Yeah. And the guys are using their friends' pictures <laughs> or they're like, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess on these apps. And they go in with the intention that I'm not getting anything serious out of this. So it's, it's just very much for fun. And they just ruin it for everyone. <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> but, and I, I don't think, like, I know there have been a few stories I've heard of people getting married in Kuwait mm-hmm. off of Tinder, meeting some great people off of Tinder. It's but just crazy because Tinder died in the West. Yeah, it's still strong here strong here and there are other apps uh i think like that that people are on but Mm. i've heard some stories where people have met great people off of these apps but they're just so embarrassed and ashamed to to talk about it and it's also you have to sift through a lot of shit (laughs) (laughs) we can beat that out um but you really have to like it's it's just so bad on these apps but i i think like i don't know if if it's like a um a, abuse or it's just because they think that this is not part of our culture or our norm or whatever so you know we're not it must be gonna take it seriously it must be i think i mean if dating 10 years ago was much more taboo than it is today then online dating i mean we're we're light years behind at this point for a lot i think Putting yourself out there, there's still a negative connotation here. For if sure. you're seen out on a date and this is not your fiance, your halal dating uh, opportunity, people are going to say things. Obviously, this depends on the family. So there are liberal families and all of that. So yeah. just use your brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I know personally a lot of girlfriends, I've told you, they have to go on dates in the car. So dating apps, you're now publicly publicly showing that you're out like looking for love that's crazy but it's like it's similar to but if someone's on a dating app and they see you no but if someone's on a dating app and they see you it means they're also doing it so literally i'm like how How is is that that shameful than matchmaking oh and how is that you're doing it yourself yeah your family's not doing it for you (laughs) (laughs) that's the takeaway of this episode you think no but no, but there is the idea, right, that if you're doing it, it's almost like your your family don't know. Whether your family knows or not, first of all, your family's trying to marry you off from the moment you turn, like, what, 18? Yeah. So it's fine. Do it yourself. Also, matchmaking, I think it cuts off the whole, like, well, 
what are his lifestyle preferences that I'm not going to get off of matchmaking? Yeah. Does he travel with mixed groups? Does he travel, period? Is he someone that prays five times a day? These are, these are topics that I don't think someone's going to try and be super honest with their families with, you know? Because we always want our families to think we're the best at everything anyways. And there's so yeah. much judgment. You need that. I think in this day and age for our generation, this makes more sense for the liberal kids than matchmaking does. Do yeah. you even want someone that wants to be set up via a matchmaker? Because that is also going to bring in a different type of person, a more traditional yeah. person. I mean, look, you will have to choose the means that work for you. Work for you. Like you said, like if you and are all more means traditional are good. person and more conservative, then you go through a matchmaker, you go through family. And all means go, are good. You know, all means yeah. are genuinely they work for you, but you have to think what you want because yeah. we still come from an area of the world where dating is taboo and it's complicated think if i want a traditional person i need to look at the traditional route mm. if i want a liberal person maybe i need to look through a liberal route or dating <laughs> we haven't touched on this at all but via people in your friend group yeah you know you can tell your friends hey guys you know what i'm like try and find someone in your friend group that could work for me you know you tell your guy friends yeah. do you guys know anyone i think that also that's a really solid way to date because your friends really know you yeah and they know what you're like like in and out and they know what your family's like most of the time as well yeah so they'll be able to maybe find someone that works for you we've been mostly talking about our take on dating in kuwait but we know in saudi or in other gulf countries like it is very similar but it is also different different like when we were talking about guys and girls being friends like we know equated uh, guys obviously have more trouble <laughs> talking to girls but like you were saying like once they're in they have game but yeah. their approach they just don't know how to approach but i noticed like saudi guys like we were talking like they're more they have female friends okay with being friends with yeah. females and they i think it's easier for them to approach yeah it's more casual. The, the dating scene, from what I've gathered from my Saudi yes. girls, <laughs> Tell us is the tea. way more casual. Guys are not pursuing that hardcore. Th they're thirty million. They're not. They're not the small population yeah. that we are. So there are more options. It's more relaxed. From region to region, it will really vary. So we don't really. We can't really compare. For us, it's like the Bedouin areas and like the city. But for them, they have rural, uh, rural. <laughs> yeah, so they have really rural areas where they're going to be super traditional. They might never see each other yeah. until it gets to marriage. You know, just the tribes agree on it. Mm -hmm. And then you have people in Jeddah who are usually the most liberal. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, they'll just, you know, come up to one another and cha, and it's more cool. In the Riyadh, it's maybe a bit more conservative. It's yeah. But stiff. even though it is conservative, I'm, I'm going to say that... I noticed interactions between men and women were a lot chill, chill, yeah, more chill. It's than not. Oh my god! Wait, a member of the opposite sex is talking. But also, to me. I think it's because like you know, like your Uber driver can be Saudi. Yeah, people yeah. working in restaurants are Saudi, so it, they're more relaxed when it comes to that. And uh, going back to like the apps. Well, my one of my Saudi friends was telling me about this app. So basically, what they do is like they would, uh, it's it's basically four 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 square square, uh, but it, it's like four square for a swarm or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so basically, they, they download this app called Swarm, and they would go into like a coffee shop, a restaurant, whatever. And if you see someone you like, or or you know you're trying to like browse, you check in on swarm and then you see everyone else you on see it. who's checked in and you can see their profile and if you like their picture that's if you almost see them, you like can a dating up yeah that's the same way you're seeing them in face person to face yeah, organically yeah. it's not really a meet cute but, <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's it's, it's uh, our version of a meet cute. our generation's <laughs> meet cutes are honestly i feel like they're online i think i remember when online dating first started in the west it was crazy. It was, you're going to get kidnapped. You're going to get killed. Obviously, this yeah. still happens. Use your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Use your brain. <laughs> but for the most part, I do think if someone's not comfortable maybe being on an app, I get it. You know, there is a taboo topic that still, you know, it's yeah. still taboo, whatever. Um, who cares? First of all, like, live your life. Don't worry, I'm not Um 
but I think Swarm. Live your truth. Live your truth. Always. Um, but Swarm is probably like, it's a good foray maybe into that realm without doing it. And yeah. obviously people slide in DMs all the time. This is an international thing. People will slide in your DMs wherever you are. They'll slide from another continent, which I adore. I don't, <sighs> what are you doing? I don't get it. What I are you get, doing? Like, honestly, if you're sliding in my DMs, I know you're sliding in hundreds of girls DMs. Yeah. Especially if you're just literally reacting with hard eyes or the fire emoji or you're literally just telling me you're beautiful you're this you're that no react you know, you to something funny? or engage with something that i'm interested in or you know what i mean guys who are just sliding in dms like what is the end game or what's not marriage and kids but in saying that i also know people who met through you know there's twitter and there's instagram there are there it can happen it can happen but for yeah. the most part just but in general, I I think like before we we leave you guys, let's just quickly wrap up. Do you want to do some do's and don'ts yes. real quick? All yeah. right, give us a do. Do come up and start a normal conversation. Don't come up if I'm not smiling at you <laughs> or my body language shows that I'm not interested. I am not even leaning towards you. <laughs> not so, smiling. Not smiling. I'm literally giving <laughs> you a <laughs> stink eye. <laughs> stink eye. Don't come up. Do smile at women if you stare for too long. Otherwise, it's a bit creepy. Yeah. Don't follow women under any circumstance. Under any circumstance. So that's creepy. Do ask what her methods of like preferred contact are. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just assume it's going to be Snapchat. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, I love that. You did a do and don't. And oh, <laughs> you are. <laughs> do stay true to what you want. If you want to end up with someone that your family approves of and you know your family is conservative and you know that your family is not too open. Don't waste someone's time. Don't waste someone's time. I think ultimately what this whole episode is about is do talk about dating, guys. You know, let's yeah. normalize the fact that everyone does it. Let's normalize it. Let's talk about it so that the things that are don'ts and that are major don'ts, you know, at that, they don't get normalized. And let's not look down on it. Like dating is not always like Hot scandalous. On. Like some people actually date with good intentions yeah. and they do want to ultimately, like, they date to get married. It's the same thing. It's just a different route. So let's not look down on that. We are, at the end of the day, modern Arab women. So... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Where's the ham horn? <laughs> and lastly, do like, comment, subscribe, and ask any questions. We hope yes. we answered your And tell today. us if we got some of the information. Wrong. Wrong. Insult us. Yes. <laughs> Said hate. <laughs> hate watching don't, please works. Don't hate us. Don't. I don't know if I can handle it. Um, leave five stars as well. If you're going to not leave a five star review, just don't. Don't review don't. us. Hey, you guys. We're just going to end it. We're leaving. <laughs> this Bye. is the episode. Bye. <laughs>